I'm Frank, and if you've ever gotten into an argument with any geek on the internet, you understand why we call this opinion piece. But let's face it, geeks have opinions on things. I know that's not really news, but it's important to stop and say this is a good thing. Geeks have opinions because they care. They have enthusiasm for things that they love. And sometimes geeks spray their opinions across the internet in the way that a xenomorph with a flesh wound sprays out acid. And that itself isn't necessarily bad until you get into situations where geeks cross the line. And sometimes they do. Sadly, this is also nothing new. Long before Gamergate, geeks were sending death threats to editors at DC. Now, of course, harassing, bullying, and threatening are always wrong. But let's face it, just because a geek doesn't agree with you, that doesn't make him toxic. And there's this new trend online of lacing into all geeks who give thumbs down to anything as entitled man babies who simply don't understand that their narrow interpretation of a property isn't the only direction it can go and that their infinitesimal demographic is meaningless. Look, there is a full spectrum of tact involved when geeks express their opinions, but the attitude now is to tar all geeks who don't like something with the same brush. And the hilarious thing is that the most vocal critics of geeks appear to be completely blind as to how supremely sanctimonious they are being. A geek imperiously decrees that something is awful, and a geek critic imperiously decrees with equal certainty that anyone who doesn't like that thing is a bullying idiot. Well, isn't that the Batmobile calling Darth Vader's helmet black? If I'm being honest, it all seems like a cheap way of fishing for positive social media interaction. I mean, who's going to defend an assault on the opinions of geeks? It's like shooting Sando Aqua monsters in a barrel. And the explanations geek critics give are just so head-scratching. Saying, yeah, well, a lot of people liked it is never a good answer. It's never a good thing to try and silence someone for saying that the emperor has no clothes. I don't want to live in an Oceana where Winston Smith isn't even allowed to call The Last Jedi double plus ungood. I do understand the sentiment of chastising older male geeks for online bullying. I really do. But it's become far too sweeping, and the big picture is being distorted and obscured. This demographic that you speak of was not responsible for all the hate that was on Joss Wheaton's Twitter feed just after the release of Age of Ultron. That was a completely different group of people who went into absolute hateful berserker mode because they were not given the Black Widow backstory they insisted they were entitled to. Now, are women harassing a white male and men harassing females interchangeable? Of course not. They're in completely different positions of power dynamics. Not the same thing at all. But all that Black Widow stuff was exactly the inappropriate sense of ownership that geek critics claim outrages them so much. So an iota of perspective would be appreciated. There's just a whole bunch of false assumptions being made when a geek hates on something. First, there's this notion that geeks have such a specific idea of how a property should be that they can't accept any deviation from that. Nonsense. Earlier this year, Netflix released Devilman Crybaby, a reboot of a show whose look and sensibility was so beautifully indicative and married to the 1970s. They completely modernized it, bringing it into the present with characters texting and even rapping. Then it came out, and the attitude of not my devil man quickly became, oh, wait, never mind. This is a brilliant instant classic. It threads the needle of being completely reverent to the manga and anime while also being totally modern and relevant to the youth of today. Then there's this lie that geeks won't accept contradictions to canon. Not true. All that we ask is that retcons, whether in the same universe or in a reboot, be done with an understanding of the source material. 
There's a moment in the first Ultimate Avengers animated movie where the Avengers are all fighting the Hulk and Hulk goes to try and pick up Thor's hammer. And at this point, I had the same response as many geeks. Yeah, I've read Defenders 10 and I therefore know that this isn't going to work. Instead, expectations were completely subverted as Hulk picked up Mjolnir and beat the crap out of Thor with it. Mind-blowing awesomeness. Perhaps most ubiquitous is the belief that geeks refuse to accept something if it isn't given a dark and serious treatment. You know, to help justify in our own minds that the things from our childhood that we still love are serious and that we shouldn't have shame over them. Look, we just want things that are good, period. When it was announced that Batman the Brave and the Bold was the new Batman cartoon in 2008, yeah, eyebrows were raised. We were in full Christian Bale Dark Knight mode, and here was an openly juvenile approach that was going to team him up with Plastic Man, the Blue Beetle, the Batman from Planet X, and Aquaman while he's going on a family vacation? WTF? Then it came out and it was clear immediately that this was a masterpiece that had an insane understanding of the Silver Age DC universe. Contrary to the full court press attack on geeks, we can accept stuff that's targeted for kids, if it's good. The problem that geek critics can't seem to understand is that the corollary isn't true. Just because something is for kids, that doesn't make it good. Justice League Unlimited and the Super Friends are basically the same cartoon show. A bunch of DC superheroes fighting against the familiar rogues gallery of their villains. Except one show has a complex interracial love triangle between Jon Stewart, Hawkgirl, and Vixen, as well as a multi-episode battle for power to try and take control of the Legion of Doom. And the other show has the Wonder Twins, Zan and Jaina, and their space monkey Gleek, teaching teenage girls not to hitchhike. Geeks simply aren't as soup to nuts stubborn as they're being painted out to be. If we're wrong about something, so be it. I defended Iron Fist on many a message board until Netflix released that piece of garbage. And in 2015, countless geeks were saying, wait a minute, Warner Brothers. You want to try and cash in on the insane worldwide money that the Fast and Furious is making by rebooting Mad Max? And you're going to wheel out an ancient George Miller to direct it and turn it into a feminist revolution movie? What a soulless corporate decision. When it was clear that this reboot somehow substantially eclipsed the classic greatness of The Road Warrior, geeks gladly and willingly ate crows by the murder. I think the most important thing to point out is that in those instances where creators are actually, truly, and authentically a geek about something, and they get to expand that universe, the results are often extraordinary. James Cameron made The Terminator so he could use it as a calling card to make a sequel to Alien. Ryan Coogler begged Sylvester Stallone to let him expand the Rocky universe in a way that was both completely original and showed an intimate understanding of what had come before. John Hurwitz... Hayden Schulzper and Josh Held were complete geeks for The Karate Kid, and they created an internet series no one could have seen coming and was phenomenal, threading the needle for both old and new fans. The opinions of geeks don't come out of nowhere. We don't hate just to hate, but we're not going to sing hooray for everything like that band on The Simpsons. Let me give you an example. I don't like that a young Anakin Skywalker was raised on Tatooine and built C-3PO. It makes this wonderfully huge universe far too small, too insular, even incestuous. To someone who hasn't seen the original trilogy, this is a non-issue. Tatooine is just another planet that has no history for them. It's not a problem at all, even if they dislike other things in that film. Now, if you want to argue with me, that's fine. Discussion and debate are crucial in a free geek society. But any counter-argument you have against my opinion should not be based on the idea that ignorance is bliss. It's not. Loving something so much that you become a geek about it, let's face it, 
That's bliss.